Hey everybody, welcome back to Dad Talk Today. I am your host, Eric Carroll, and I am sitting here with Mr. Leo Zaki. Leo, what's going on, my man? Oh, I'm just enjoying CPAC. How's it going? Uh, it's going all right, man. So I see you're a gubernatorial candidate for the great state of California. You better believe it. Yeah, man. I'm so, doing it. You know, I, we, we talked a little bit about the fatherless issue, but Leo, you got a little bit of a different story with your parents. Would you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so um, I'm actually a child of divorce. Uh, my parents uh, got divorced when I was seven years old, and uh, it was it was very difficult, uh, not an easy divorce. And um, you know, having been through the, the back and forth with, with custody battles and um, having just parents that just really weren't meant to be parents, I was very fortunate to have been taken by my grandmother when I was 13. And I, I came to the decision to stop living with my father uh, when I was 11, and I stopped living with my mother when I was about 13, and my grandmother took me in. Um, I would gotten to the point where I was like, yeah, I'll just go to military school, whatever it took to get away from, from, the, from the terrible home life. You know, unfortunately, sometimes that happens. You know, we was talking to one of the candidates earlier, you know, he was talking about his, his daughter died, and now he's raising his kids. Grandparents have been a lost part of this discussion. I believe that grandparents yeah. play such a vital role in their grandchildren's life, and a, a lot of times, I think, the importance of what goes on with grandparents has been overshadowed. Do you agree with that? Oh my God, absolutely. Um, grandparents, my, my, I can't. Okay, for me, my grandmother, she's she's the shining light in my life. She's the same. Right. She, without her, I would be in prison, on drugs, uh, in the military, which isn't a bad thing, or I'd be in the ground. And there's no doubt about that in my mind. My grandmother, she stepped up and. And she's just had, she's always been a loving, nurturing woman. And I think grandparents just inertly are, are just, they're so loving of, of, of the, right. that following generation that what their offspring have produced. They love, they, yeah, of course, they, you know, they want to spoil their grandkids and love them and all that. But I mean, there's nothing like, you know, grandma's cooking. Right. You know, that sort of thing. Um, but she, my grandparents really shaped my life. And they also came from a different time. They grew up, uh, you know, in a post in the depression, the, the the end of the depression and World War II era. So they grew up in a different time where you know there was struggle, there right. wasn't pl plenty. They they know what the difficulties are. It's just a, it's a different upbringing. You know, it's it's crazy, man. I know you was said you was deprived of your you know relationship with your parents uh, early on because of the circumstances. How does it make you feel knowing like that there's these fathers inside of family court and mothers too? Uh, because of the system the way it's doing and they are fighting tooth and nail to be in their children's lives and not being gave the chance. Yeah, I mean, well the court systems, they're, they're very, too, they're too involved in that sort of thing. Yeah. And it gets perpetuated by lawyers and they've just kind of taken advantage of this system and how broken it is. 100%. So, you, you wind up seeing the lawyers pitting the, their clients, the husband and wife, against each other. And to the point where they won't even speak to one another. So they're just racking up the bills, you know, oh, you know, send an email, make a phone call, and, and, and they, they put ideas into their heads about what they should get because you, know, you have one person, you have the person sitting on your shoulder just telling you all the things that you should have and what you deserve. Right. And it's all about per perpetuating this, this case. Right. And, and meanwhile, you have the children stuck in the middle and they just become weaponized. And for me, I can tell you, like, when um, I know that I was going back and forth with my parents, I wanted to play Pop Warner football, and both parents had to agree. So my dad said I could play, my mom said I couldn't play. So after playing two games, I got pulled off because of legal stuff. And uh, oh, they, they, they forced children to go to therapy, which they don't, they don't need. That's interesting you say that in many of these custody cases, before they'll decide what's going on, they'll get psychological evaluations, custody evaluators, all these different things, and sometimes this can equal up to hundreds of thousands of dollars oh, yeah. just for this, and it's like, it shouldn't take that. To be a parent, you know, just uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had a father, he had faced false allegations, man. Uh, he had done everything to prove his innocence, and he was exonerated last May. He took a sexual assessment uh, test. Not only did he pass it, they said he passed it with one of the lowest scores they had ever seen. His name was John Mast. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, he was set to get his kids for the first time in three years, and uh, his father-in-law shot and killed him at the designated meeting spot. 
and this is what's going on inside of our family courts. It's a really serious problem, and we got to get some stuff going on. Now, had shared parenting been in there, and that's some legislation that we're trying to get passed in these states, where it says if mom and dad are both fit, willing, and able, they're not drug addicts, they're responsible adults, yeah. and they get a divorce, that mom and dad would have equal access upon divorce, so that would promote co-parenting and not fighting over who gets who. Yeah, and it's important, you know, sons and daughters both need their father in their life and they also need their mother in their life and late girls do too i got four daughters absolutely it's, it's yeah. important you know you got mama's boys and daddy's girls it's important i mean you see what happens you know to, to folks who fall through the cracks and, right and it's it's sad you know there's a bit everybody deserves a better chance at life and with with that nuclear family i mean even you know people get divorced and it happens but still sort of holding that nuclear family somewhat together it's essential for right. children to be to to get a rounded uh, upbringing um, because you know mom's gonna have her views and dad's gonna have his views um, but it's it's the ability to see either both sides or see something or just find the good in it it, right. help, it helps children now if, if something like this if you could get into office would you support some legislation that actually gave them equal access are you kidding me of course <laughs> That's what we wanted to hear, guys. I, I think that's it. Leo, Zachy, tell us where everybody can find you if they want to keep up with you. I'm impossible to find on social media. <laughs> uh, I just started my campaign. I will be putting together uh, a website and social media. I, I've never been a fan of social media, uh, but I, I have to for it's the necessary campaign. evil, right? Fortunately, it is. I, I'm very against the big tech oligarchs, but I will uh, get my stuff out there. Uh, you can message me, you can email me at zacky4gov at protonmail.com. That's not the number four, that's F-O-R. Um, and uh, just keep listening for, for my name, Leo Zaki, and hopefully you can support me and we can help turn California around and help save families. Leo, brother, a good discussion, man, and I wish you the best of luck, my man. Really it's so nice it. to meet you. Thank you so very much. Yes, sir. Everybody, stick around. We'll be right back.